Hi, I'm Tony Bove. Welcome to Art V. On this program, we'll be talking to artists Jade Walsh and Enza Benincasa. Earlier, I spoke with Melinda Martin of Linden Gallery in St Kilda. Hi, Melinda. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, to start off, can you tell us a little bit of background about the Linden Gallery? So Linden New Art is a gallery that's based in St Kilda. We're in a old Victorian home that was built in the late 1870s mm -hmm. by some Jewish immigrants who came to Australia and made their fortune in the gold rush. Oh. So much of a fortune that they built the grand house. Yeah. Um, they then went on to have um, 14 children, which, uh, yeah, I know, 14 is a big wow. one. I think Mrs. Michaelis probably has a very different version of that story than Mr. Michaelis had. <laughs> um, so 14 kids, um, the, fact, the house stayed in the family for um, until about the 1950s and then it became a private hotel called Linden Court. Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, a lot of post-World World War II migrants would come, they'd live in one of the rooms for a period of time and then they'd um, you know, get a job, find an apartment and move on. Um, and it stayed at, as Brandon as a hotel until sort of the mid-1980s and then it was bought by oh. what was St Kilda Council then. Yep. and turned into a gallery in about 1986. Oh, 86. I was wondering what, when it um, did start off, but oh, okay, that's a while ago now. Yeah, so we're in our 30s. Yeah, right. Oh, great stuff. Well, it's a beautiful building. I walk past it all the time. I'm a local. So, so did you have to shut down or do anything or put any yeah. new procedures into effect to overcome, um, I, I suppose, preventative measures in place to, to get through? the COVID-19 yeah. and also to looking forward? So we literally, um, we had a plan to sort of be closing um, and we, we were working towards that plan. Um, we then had a staff member who developed some symptoms. So we all had oh. to kind of self-isolate and, and oh. step away for a bit. Fortunately, he was um, fine and okay. it was just a precaution. Uh -huh. yeah. um, but we already started to think about if we do have to shut, what might that look like? So we began sort of sitting down and looking, working with the team and thinking about, okay, what do we need to do now? Well, we need to be able to communicate with our audience. Mm. So we developed a kind of really detailed communication plan where we were doing sort of e-news every couple of weeks yeah. and really looking at the context in which we were living. So really looking at artists who had, um, you know, painted through works in which there were complex social issues, artists yep. who live in isolation, yep. you know, the kind of extended durational performance of testing sure. your body to the limits. Yeah. Um, so we really began to play around with those ideas and then go to the artists who we were showing or the artists that we worked with in the past and asking them yeah. to talk about what it was like to work in isolation because that was the big transition that most people were yeah. um, making in their lives from yeah. going to a place of work to suddenly that place being in you know, yeah. their bedroom or their lounge room or mm. kitchen table. Um, so we really um, asked our artists to kind of share their experiences and share things like what are the podcasts that they were listening to, what were the things that they were looking at, so that became part of our conversation. Sure. And then we really thought, okay, well, the one thing that we can't do is actually show the work that is amazing in our gallery at the moment, so how do we do that? Yep. Um, we formed a partnership with a local technology company here in the city of Port Phillip and they did a 360 tour of our current exhibitions. Oh, so we have 360 tours of three shows on that are all sitting on our website yep. um, and you can kind of wander through those exhibitions. Um, and at the moment we're just working behind the scenes to upgrade those and develop a bit more content into them. So there'll be like a kids element and quizzes and... Oh. Right. multilingual aspects to it because we'd already begun working on a project to develop more multilingual kind of programming um, for the gallery and that's kind of been interrupted a bit so we're just adjusting that slightly and, and moving into a digital realm right. and then we're we're building a 3D gallery. Well, I'm not personally building a sure. 3D gallery. Someone <laughs> is making that happen, which is just a replica of our gallery spaces. And oh, that will right. give us kind of a blank space in which to program into the future. Oh, fabulous. Um, I've heard a whisper that we're all going to be allowed to have 20 people at a certain time in the near future. So hopefully that will help uh, you know, get some people well, we drifting in. We have reopened already. Right. Oh, terrific. 
and we can have 20 people. So we've divided the sort of day into two sessions yep. um, and we can have 20 people in each session. And given the exclusion of art in superannuation and with the drop in art sales uh, generally, do you think that um, something could be worked out in actual, to incorporate art um, for its commercial viability? I think there probably needs to be some support for individual artists who will probably be doing it tough and I think those, you know, the emerging artists and the mid-career and the established artists will all have their own different kind of needs um, mm. depending where they're at and that's quite a challenge. Yeah. There are still, there do exist some great programs, there's a program called Art Money so you can kind of, okay. it's like a lay-by program for yeah. your art purchase and that you can go and buy it and you pay it off in a monthly instalment. Oh, um, that's good. And I think there are programs like that that I think should be really encouraged and fostered. There's also great organisations like Art Bank where you can rent artwork for your yeah. home or your office and that becomes a tax deduction if it's your business. Yeah. Um, so I think if we invest in those things, I think then that will allow artists to continue and flourish. Well, art's always been considered an investment in the past, so hopefully it will be in the future yeah. as well. Yeah, I hope so too. Great. Thank you so much, Melinda. Appreciate your time. Enza Benincasa is a long-term artist who has had works in several galleries, including Vermissage in Paran and Jackman Gallery in St Kilda. Hi, Enza. Thanks for joining us on the show. Hi, Tony. Nice to be here. So what have you been up to lately, Enza? Well, I've actually been up to a lot since the um, coronavirus yep. pandemic started. Um, I found it was, that it was very interesting when they told us like to isolate yes. and that this had come about and also that they were going to pay us to stay home. Right. So I thought, oh my gosh, goodness, is that for real? Yeah. And so I thought as an artist, I thought, wow, what an opportunity to be able to stay home, get paid and do my artwork. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take this opportunity. And so I really started uh, thinking and I thought I'm going to just get out all my paints, do what I wanted to do. Yep. And I just um, had a really great moment or a great time of flourishing yep. during this period. So, and I'd just been painting a lot of different things and very huge, large scale um, drop sheets for paint drop sheets. Yep. And so um, I've been doing that and yeah. As I do each work, I have been putting it on social media. I was which, going to ask you the yeah. importance now of being visible. Yeah, yeah I find that very important um, to give you the confidence to express yourself in the way you want to express yourself yeah. and to market yourself into an audience that you probably needed someone else to help you to do it. Yeah. So I found that I mean, it's great to have a, a gallery to help you sell your works, yep. but often, or you know, a lot of artists don't get that opportunity. No. However, now, if most people have the nous to use um, Instagram, Facebook, those sort yep. of things, yep. and you can really market yourself to the world. And um, I found that Instagram has really helped me a lot because. Yep. Um, with the hashtags, if you know how to use hashtags, and if you don't, yep. um, ask someone how to do it, it's yep. very easy. Yep. So you can actually um, f hone in or focus into the groups of groups that you'd like to, to see your work or where yep. you want your, your work to go out to. So I've had a great response from that, yep. and I've made a lot of friends. Yeah, um, great. Sometimes people say, oh no, you can't, but you, you get some great interaction yep. uh, with people who want to interact with you. Yep. Some might not. Like but if, people. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you do, you find that you might um, um, collaborate with them in some way. Yeah. Or, you know, and um, the longer you're on there, you, you find that you've got things in common yeah. or you want to work the same way or you might um, get an opportunity together or, or just by yourself. Yeah. So for me, it's been fantastic. It's mm. also, it's given me the confidence. I mean, I'm pretty confident as well, yep. but it's given me confidence to not worry about other groups or other people, but to showcase myself. Yeah, focus on, your, on, on yeah. yourself for change. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah and it. also focus on what you want to say and how you want to say it and yes. not to be led too much by maybe yeah. a gallery right. or other people that you're with. Yep. So for me, I found it, not just during this COVID time, mm, mm. it's given me momentum, yes. but I just found that that gave me a very great thing just to stand by yourself. 
because times have changed. Yep. Uh, in the past, you've exhibited at, at Jack McGallery. Well, you, yes. you'd probably tell me there's quite a list. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had an extensive list of um, exhibiting. Yep. And that is because um, I think you need to be tenacious and constant in your yes. in your exhibiting or, or just doing your artwork, yep. you know, if you want to be out there. True. So that's probably... Any advice for any uh, young and upcoming artists who might be struggling through the, the pandemic and the restrictions? I mean, pretty simple, you know, I mean, I'm a believer in follow your passion, yeah. make it your purpose, but um, I'm not sure. You've had a lot more experience. Yeah, I think just um, not to worry too much because we all go through stages of worry or whatever. Yeah. I just think take this as a break. It's like a forced break. Yeah. Um, if things aren't happening for you now, it doesn't mean they're not going to later. Dead and right. yeah, and I think also uh, mm. reach out to other people, to other artists. If you don't have artist friends, but you've got someone that um, sort of understands you, so you can sort of um, interact bounce and bounce off. Yeah. And then just develop your own individuality, your own beauty in what you do. It doesn't even have to be beautiful in your or accurate in how you do your art but mm. allow yourself to say what you want to and how you think you you know your beauty in your work because yeah. uh, that message will go to someone else yeah. and also you will get the satisfaction of getting your message out even to yourself and well, you'll grow yeah that's you know? the beauty of art sometimes we, we, what we look at might have been made for something completely different from what we individually uh, perceive it to be mm. or, wh or whoever it projects us into, uh, you know. Yeah, and sometimes uh, what you do now that you think is, is not interesting or no good, further down the line, people will look at it and it will be relevant to maybe how we were today. Yeah. I mean, if people are feeling great, like at, at the moment, I, I felt fantastic during the COVID. Yeah. So I thought, how, how did this happen? How did we stop? Yeah. How did we stop this machine that I thought in my life it would never? How could we ever stop the world like this? And then this happened. Yeah. So for me, I found it uh, liberate. I mean, besides the fear of sure. what of what can happen. Yes. This break has uh, changed the way we we see ourselves. Yeah. We see ourselves as human and not as some machine running off. You know, mm. having to yeah. compete and whatever. Or, and always in a hurry. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. It's it's, you know, it's exciting on one level, but how it's felt so nice to just slow down. So we can actually learn from you know, the, well, the the external factors that can come and uh, change the world we live in. Yeah. So because of uh, your past with uh, Jackman Gallery, uh, you probably know Richard Morrison, Absolutely, of course. Absolutely, yep. I think we might have to get him in for an interview uh, in here. That would be a bit of a I'm laugh. I'm sure he'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't seen him for a while, so it'd be great to see him. Yeah, again, I see him all the time and I see him on social media. Oh, great. He's very big on there. Well, hopefully when he sees this, he knows we're coming for him. Okay, okay. I'm sure I'll tell Enzo, him. Enzo, thank you so much for your time and for coming in. Thank you so much for Good having me. Nice to meet you. Jade Walsh has exhibited both nationally and internationally and works in a variety of mediums. Welcome Jade, thanks for coming in. Thanks Tony. Can you tell us a little bit about your art? My art, yes, I, uh, I work in textiles and painting um, and a bit of performance. Yep. Um, and I've been working for about 15 years and um, it's often personal art. You're right. Yeah. I think I'm familiar with some of your work. Yep. Oh, it was a few years ago, but did you, a, a gallery in off Ackland Street was it down one of the? the I forgot the oh, name. Oh, the, yes, the artist-run space that we we ran in St Kilda. Yeah. Yep. You you visited. I think the it was two? a while ago. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So I also um, recently ran a artist-run space in St Kilda for two years. Right. And that's the connection with with Simon too. So, yeah. Oh right. Okay. Uh, now we're asking everyone. Um, because pertinent to the the pandemic, how did the restrictions um, put in place? Did they affect the way you're operating? They obviously would have, but how were you going before the pandemic? And have yep. you had to adjust anything? How did you react? Yeah. So with the art space, we were um, we were 
scheduling to close anyway because of financial um, reasons. But we, yeah. you know, we could have kept going if yeah. for a little bit, but of course the pandemic shut us down. Yeah. But we've actually seen some really positive things come of this, which was just set, it, set something up online, yep. which I'm terrible at. I mm. always did not want to do that. So it forced me to, you know, make, to set, set our space up online and yeah. be able to do that. Um, and my own practice, I'm, it was a beautiful thing because it was, as we were just talking about before, yeah. it's suddenly you have more time at home. Yeah. You are able to work on your art and we have the government help. So, yes. and I think I, I had to be you know, honest to say that even though it was a terrible thing, it's yeah. suddenly brought up things for artists to go, oh my God, this is so, this is a blessing in a way, just to have that time. Yeah, well, the extra supplement, but yeah. it's not so much the financial support, the, mm. I mean, that is mm. obviously important because every cent, every yeah. dollar counts at the moment, it's tough. Well, a lot of people lost their jobs, so That's this right. is something absolutely essential that had to happen as well. Yeah, I've also I've got to agree because mm. I think the one thing that it did give artists or people who um, you know, it had to get better anyway. It mm. takes time. Mm. Re strategize the way we do things and everybody mm. has mentioned their marketing and the online. Yep. Part. But I think the, the difficult thing was the more feeling more alone, I think or yeah. isolated. Um, and I think with the art space yeah. that was such a community people coming in, the you know, the doors and yeah. connecting, um, yeah. then to just that's finished and yeah. suddenly I'm on my own and, and yeah. other artists are on their own. And But w what came with that, that yeah. shock of w what do we do now? Well, we do our art, but where are we going to show? Yeah. Um, I know I had I had a, a show booked in as well, which I, has gone and right. the gallery's shut. Right. Um, mm. But it was a bit, um, so the, what happened at the start was the shock and then it was the everyone touching base, you know, connecting, yeah. Yeah. emailing, which yeah. was amazing too. It was like, yeah. oh, I've never been so connect you know having emails yep. checking in with the artists we've worked for with at two at the toot art space yeah um and that feeling of oh we're gonna get through this something else is coming what and and then the um the, the the calls and the talking through what what we can do next sure even with the city of port phillip they've been very supportive of us too and great they've got the grants going so it was on, on talking to them and feeling I was going more to ask connected. You, uh, mm. the local government in Port yeah. Phillip's pretty good. So. They're amazing. They're yeah. very supportive. But I think now I'm feeling we've come through this with a lot more. So I'm feeling much more connected than we were in in a different way. Yeah. Not that flesh, you know, people on people, which is what we miss. But it's sure. uh, it's kind of a new level of people who wouldn't normally connect with you, council people. They may not ever have gotten to the gallery. Or are now very available and to aware. talk. Yep. Uh, well, yep. that's, in, in, that's a very good point. It mm. has, actually has opened up communication mm. channels yep. with our local council, uh, yep. which has got to yep. be a positive. Yeah, and there, and who can't get on the phone? That's right. And it's m made a lot made th those sort of things more accessible, where yeah. people might have wanted to come to see the space or and they just didn't have the time, and now yeah. it's very interconnected. Like they sure. they're interested and they want to help. So there's more of that happening. You mentioned you may have, uh, uh, what were you doing? What's, what have you got planned? Because you've got something coming up. Mm. It was a pop-up? Yeah, so, well, b since the pandemic, that has shut down the possibilities of physical exhibitions. Yes. Yes. Um, but what we've, what we've got now is the, well, the city council, the council, for Port Phillip Council have offered grants to help online things. So we, yeah. d we did get our, our website going, but there's only so much you can do. Right on your own so it the did. grant is a, if it's if we get, get it yes uh, we will be in a, we will be able to use other people to help us build our online platform a little bit better with a publicist sure. and um reach out and ma market you know yes. we can't do that on our own us artists we can't do everything well uh, uh, yeah exactly i mean well, you yeah. could be jack of all trades but uh, the yeah. marketing again it's all coming back to the marketing yeah and, um yeah. And, uh, you know the younger generation it's very much um, like the, the millennials are they're sort mm. of a native with the mobile yep, phones. Yeah, of so, course. Um, they are. So they have a better... And even the Gen Zs. Well, it's mm. a natural thing <laughs> for them to be born with a phone in mm. their hand, so they're pretty good at it. But you've got to have... The, the analogue is a beautiful thing too, isn't it? What we were yes. brought up with. And if, yes. you have, if you're losing that hands-on, that's yeah. really sad too. So, um, Something to mm. ask everyone is, uh, was there any great influence mm. that um, pushed you or helped you become mm. an artist? Oh, I think <laughs> personal experience. Yeah. Going through... 
things that yeah. were a bit difficult. Um, I always I started life as a graphic designer for well, right. my career, yeah. and I was ready to go and do commercial work and. Yeah. Um, and then I, I had a, I went overseas as, as a lot of Aussies do yes, to do. find themselves. And um, <laughs> I worked as a nanny and I didn't have the best time and it was oh, right. in, fr in Paris I understand. and um, had a bit of a breakdown and then um, right. a, a small breakdown yeah. and then thought I need to do art now. So it was a personal kind of a, yeah. oh, now I, I think art's reserved for people who need it. You know, sometimes it's, it's quite therapeutic, but it's, for it's anyone, but it's an old ancient yeah, creative process. It helps. It's survival and it's a privilege and it's... So it I came at it when I thought I needed it. Sure. And it's a beautiful thing. It's and you've survival. Been doing how many years yeah, now? Yeah, for like, a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I won't give away my age, no. but yeah. <laughs> any, advi any advice to any up and coming young artists who might be struggling mm. out there? Sure. I think um, even this, the pandemic's taught me to connect and not make networking I think networking is a funny word but right. to connect and be kind and open yeah. just not um, I think it, this is what the pandemic's given to the Melbourne art world which I used to think is very clicky and yeah. difficult and snobby and but when you do art you don't mind about that but yeah. I think now people are learning to be kinder yeah. open yeah. listen and and connect yeah. and just keep the ego in check yeah. but to be open to things and, and and just reach out and talk and if the, share and if the current climate has taught us anything it's be, yeah um, be prepared to be um, innovative yeah yeah um, absolutely open to anything solutions be prepared for those external or the macro mm, yep. factors that can come in from anywhere any day yeah. and yep. change things that's so, right so the openness to anything and to be ready for that change Thank you so much for coming in and having Pleasure. a chat, Jay. That was marvellous. Great. That's all for this week. If you'd like to contact us, send us an email at ideas at studioemedia.com.au. Thanks for watching. See you next time.